Yeah, the teams are basically playing this, uh, drafting similar to how they would in 6.81. Yeah, and I think the Lashrek they picked is actually even going to be played as a support. I think they'll put the Jakira in the core position, but we'll see when they... Uh, when they uh, hopefully, hopefully the sound is fixed now. I I was told that our sound in Dota TV sounded extremely robotic, so maybe it's not only the the voice issue we have with hearing other casters that we fixed, but maybe the quality of the sound is is really poor. Hopefully that's not the case. But yeah, let's have a let's have a look at the team. So it looks like for IG it's going to be June playing the Centaur, so that's obviously in a position three. Then Ferrari will be playing Ember Spirit, most likely in the mid lane. Chuan and CH or Chisbug will be playing the support duo of Wen Venge and Lashrak, and that leaves Luo to be playing on the Jakiro. So it was a support Lesh second pick. And with that, we have Newbie on the Radiant side. Banana will be playing your Sand King Moo, playing the Templar Assassin that put Sang Shang onto Skyrath Mage, How onto Marana, and Rabbit onto the Tidehunter. For now, both teams defending their own jungle. Uh, Sin, one thing I wanted to just check, I don't know if you've had a chance to test this yourself or if you've heard anything about it, but my understanding um, is that Earn was changed to damage instead of HP removal. Does that mean it breaks for fraction charges, do you know? Because um, there is no HP removal in Dota 2 anymore. What is the refraction? Only damage instances of five or more damage. Yeah, so it should work. Okay, yeah, it so... should trigger refraction with every proc. Beats, I mean, on top of that, there's already Liquid Fire, there's the Ember Spirit's Flame Guard, so it may not end up really being a big issue this Eating. game, but, yeah, there's a lot of damage over time, but I'm, a I'm actually wondering if that's something that might get changed uh, by the Frog, because on, on paper it seems like, I mean, do you remember when Liquid Spirit is no one would buy it because you could just break it with Medallion? That was a while ago, but yeah, that item used to never get picked, and it was one of those things that ultimately got changed, and Lincoln's later became a pretty popular pickup. So I'm wondering I, if this I may have the same way. I would say in most cases, the new urn is probably better. Um, HP removal was nice in the sense that it went through BKB, so if you put urn on someone and BKB, the damage would still persist through, I believe. Uh, I don't think it removed the urn, but the pure damage uh, should make it uh, disable blink dagger, it should break refraction charges, etc. So urn should be a more powerful item overall now, I think. Uh, we'll see if if it gets picked up more for that reason, but I don't know how much we should read into it just yet in this game. But when you look at the draft, it seems like the teams aren't really thinking too much about the new version, so maybe they won't itemize any differently either. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're going to see different kind of activity. The first few 6.82 games I played, I was like, oh wait, you should always check the room no matter what, even if your teammates already spotted one in the other lane. And the, the general seems like players kind of were like, learning the game, you know, over the course of that first match, and I'm wondering if we'll even see the pro players going through that process here, so those bounty runes, the, the double damages and so forth should be should be interesting to see. I'm really curious to see what their initial reaction is if they try to secure one rune and give it to the mid laner, or if they go greedy and try for both. So the mid laner goes to one side and the supports to the other, and the mid laner either gets the bounty or the other rune, or uh, the other way around, which means the supports will level up faster. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious to see how, how they address it. It at least looks like, let's see, there's a bounty rune up top, which will be taken by... by no New Newbie seems to care more about these runes than IG for now. IG really making no effort to go for either. Wait, so do you know, for the bounty rune, uh, the moment you get the golden experience, is that based on when you bottle it or when you use it? Because Mu is holding onto it right now, and there's kind of no point if it doesn't get better, right? I, I'm i not sure. I, I saw Arteezy it. just instantly using it when he was streaming earlier, but I, I don't actually... I would, my assumption would be just that it's whenever you use it, but I have no basis for that, so... Because <laughs> then it's technically better to, better to save it. it. Yeah. Unless you need the bottle charges. Yeah, exactly. Um, how will take a duel by top lane? This could be trouble for him. He does have Leap to potentially destroy an incoming stun, but Tron's real close, and with the Leap baited out, this probably will be our first Blood Splitter to follow up, and the first Blood of the first 6.82 land match will go the way of Team IG. Very well played. Yeah, Chisbug will be taking that. It's very important when you're playing Lishrak to get some sort of momentum early on if you're playing it in a support role in particular. Oh, this hero is awful at playing from behind. And... With According Lesh, Lesh duo, if they start getting up to level 3 and level 5 early on, they can pretty much kill every single hero on the map. Just the two of them, so... Yeah, it's a very potent duo, and, and even the TA, with... with, with uh, between the Ember Spirit and the Lashrak Edict and Flame Guard, you know, Refraction is not going to save you. 
Speaking of refraction, uh, sometimes we will see TA players just max meld against Ember since you don't keep the defensive refraction charges, but uh, for now, Mu, or at least take a second or third point early, but for now, Mu is just going for refraction max, it looks like. So focusing more on his mid game fighting. Yeah, this. Oh, oh, there's a disconnect from Rabbit. So we're gonna have a little bit of a pause again, but. Overall, of course, IG with, uh, I, I don't know if it's fair to say they have the lead based on this first blood, because the gold is still going the way of the Radiant, just by virtue of getting better farm in both mid and the safe lane. And the bounty rune, don't forget that. And the bounty rune. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was the bigger part of it, it's like 50 gold next time. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. It's but, just so satisfying uh, to pick it up, even when you're losing, it just like makes your day better. Yeah, it, I'm I'm really curious to see how the mid lane develops in particular in this version. I think it's the one that's been changed the most, arguably. I know the side lanes, like the off lanes, are now more balanced out with the creep equilibrium starts. Uh, there's more pathways to use in the side lanes, but I just feel like mid lane will be affected the most by the bottle crow nerf, by the extra rune, uh, and just I think the gameplay will revolve more around fighting in mid, where until. Um, the version we had until this one, I feel like mid lane was a lot about bottle crowing, and then if you could gank the mid lane, you would just dominate by constantly bottle crow spamming your opponent with uh, with whatever hero you had. Uh, and now perhaps there's more comeback potential in the mid lane, is that fair to say? Because you can perhaps expect to, in most cases, get a rune even though you're behind on the lane, and then if you get a gank, the new, um, the new comeback mechanism in XP and gold gain means that if you get a turnaround kill on the mid lane, you're completely back in the lane. You might even be leading. Yeah, I mean, I think that comeback mechanic is more pronounced later on in the game, since it has to do with the, the team's overall net worth, not just your own matchup, I believe. But um, that said, I, I think you you make a good point that in general, just the fact that there are two runes spawning, it's... Oh, the other thing that we should mention, Sin, is that the, the deny change. Denies are now more important than they used to be. Um, so yeah, I guess that, even more that could make it easier to snowball an advantage on the other side. And if you don't get that kill, then it may be even tougher to come back than it once was. Since your level progression will be very delayed. Um, but yeah, as far as bottle crowing, the speed burst duration has been reduced by a factor of 5 from 20 to 4. So basically bottle crowing is slower. It does move, the courier does move faster for those 4 seconds, but... Yeah, it's uh, the courier overall less is also ADMS faster. But when it has an empty bottle, of course, a big oh, actually that's true. Is lost. I don't, I, uh, I'm not sure what the yeah. That's one of those like you'll need to actually check the math, I guess, to see it's if it's thirty percent slower. Yeah, yeah. So okay, out of the extra eighty, it's going to lose thirty percent of that yeah. in addition to yeah, whatever. <laughs> It's still gonna obviously be faster than the slow courier from before, but I think if you do the math, I haven't done it myself, but just intuitively from looking at the numbers, I think bottle crowing is definitely slower because of the short speed burst, which seems more like a mechanic to try and save the courier now, rather than a transport mechanic. It's also maybe a little bit more gankable with the, the fact that we may see more courier killing in general, I'm, I'm thinking, with uh, just the... It does have the higher move speed, but it's not, you know, hasted move speed. Anyway, uh, this is all speculation, I guess, as we wait for a little more action in this first match, but... For now, it's dual lanes for newbie. They have rotated their Sand King up top. They'll leave just the Scarif Mage bottom to try and control the Centaur, and... Uh, IG, interested to see if they go for an, a rotation of any kind. Actually, no smokes on their supports right now, which... Does surprise me a little bit, just given how strong they are, but hey, if they can find these kills on how, it's worth it. Although here he will leap away to safety. Yeah, this isn't the easiest uh, lane to kill Mirana with. They got her beforehand because she was far, uh, she was too far off the lane and they managed to flank her and force out the leap and then stun with Venge. Uh, but if they're coming from the front, it's fairly easy to, uh, to dodge one of these stuns with leap. Speaking of which, Hal has leveled that up to level 2. I'm not sure if that was on purpose or not, but it's kind of an uncharacteristic build, Radiant even for offlane. Yeah, we do see the jungle getting uh, stacked by Sang Shang, so creating an opening here for the Sand King to catch up later. But now, meanwhile, lurking in that new path off to the right side, which can have to be used to gank this lane, but in this case, we'll just let him leech a little experience from a safe position. That was a uh, I do want to point out, Mu is currently dominating 430 mid, but that may change now. With the chains connecting, wasn't able to melt dodge that, dodge that one, but he'll turn now with the melt, and 430's committed to this. Oh, he's got no bottle charges. Well, and comes the rotation, and Sang Chang will punish the dive. Mu baited him. Pulled him like a fiddle. And meanwhile, IG will take that tier 1 pop. 
And that's one thing that newbie needs to be careful with at the same time. That it's really good that they get the turnaround kill mid, but these these heroes combined can take towers really fast. So Chisbug has gone for a 1-1-1 build so far in the Shrek, which is fairly common. I'm curious to see if he tries to go more of a pushing build or more of a fighting build, whether he maxes out Edict or Lightning or maybe even Split Earth. Uh, but as it looks right now, Lua will definitely be prioritizing Liquid Fire to take those towers top lane. Lua will get stunned up. I think he's pretty much dead here. Yeah, Concussive Shot, the Burrow's there. And, well, even though it's a slightly weaker slow on the Concussive, it's more than enough to get enraged for that follow-up stun with three boots out on the supports now. Jakiro a bit clunky in general. So, yeah, looking at the two solo lanes for Nubi, or well, now they're solo lanes, I guess you would say. Rabbit is, with the help of the Scarf Mage early, he is now just completely dominating this offlane center. Tripling his CS. The TA is doing quite well mid. Got the kill on the Ember Spear. With the, with the support rotation and 430, uh, struggling in the CS department a little bit, though. Not as extreme as that bottom lane, so... Overall, the lane's going pretty well for Newbie outside of outside of giving up the early tower. And Bounty Rune going the way of Cheesebug. And an Illusion to Banana, so... <laughs> It's kind it's of weird to see this, like, you you don't know exactly what to expect just yet, but I feel like giving the bounty runes to key supports early on can be really powerful. A hero like Lishrak benefits a lot from just getting that extra... How much experience is it at this point? It's like 80 it's, or something? It's 50, like, off, I wasn't at the 50 first 50 plus spot. 5 per minute, right? Yeah. It's just like 80 at this point he gets from that. It's, it's like a creep and a half, roughly, oh, which is not bad. How stun on top lane, on the how? Here? Split Earth. Do they really want to dive this one? They're thinking about it, but how turns with an arrow? Chuan, if that hit him, probably would have gone down. Meanwhile, mid lane, 430. He'll be the real victim. He tries to throw out a remnant, but that's a slow remnant. But they can press a shot of the trap affecting him, and he will end up going down. At least he did throw out the remnant, no though, so now he doesn't need to use a TP scroll to get back to lane, which, by the way, are a lot cheaper now, so... That's true. Well, 100 gold instead fast, of 135. Bottom is missing. One thing that I'm, I'm noticing is these ancients. The one, my one thing I to jump down to is just how oh mid lane jump on the move. Chains will come through. The sentry wars drop down. So Mu can't no dodge this. Now gets held in position. Slowed down by the wards and the chase is on. Fresh refraction was used, but not sure if it's enough to save him. They'll end up getting the kill. 430 on the way out with the sight of fish trying to retreat. Gosh, everybody in the mid lane. It's a party. There's five heroes for newbie to send on this one and. It was a total of four, or sorry, three in the end for G. June assisting from afar with the Stampede. Yeah, this tide is getting huge. He's now 20 CS ahead. Top the highest farmer on the dire side. So Rabbit is really getting everything he wants right now. He sent out an item. He's going for mech first here. Uh, still missing the recipe, so he's about 700 away from a very fast mech arcanes here. I guess he will be getting a blink next after that. That's a common build, but... There is, of course, also the uh, possibility that he goes Mech Pipe and just lets the Sand King be the initiator with the Blink Dagger, because Pipe is absolutely amazing against the Dire lineup. Yeah, and it's it's an item that, uh, for a while, was kind of ignored, but very, very potent item in general. Uh, but that was more when teams were grouping, and although these lineups look like they could play out that way, I'm, I'm wondering if we'll see that same style with all the other changes in the patch, so um, I'm kind of kind of reserving... Reserving my judgment, I suppose, as, as we all are for this patch, and um, just the, the way, it, as far as how teams will approach it. So three heroes smoke off for IG, and they make their move, thinking towards mid, but now backing off a bit. Newbie will farm their own woods, and Tron will lead the way here. Already level four, about to move up the ramp. He has taken a single point R and Wave of Terror, and he might run into the same chain now. Now he waves up Terrace to the south. Now Banana comes back in, gets a two hero burrow off. Moo has arrived as well. Is he gonna charge into this one? There's a magic missile, liquid fire fall, no stampede, but they stampede into our rabbit. The rabbit was waving in the waves. Kills off one. Moo will be finished off by a double damage 430, who now is on the chase. Two hero burrow through from Banana. Cheese bug caught out. A centaur choice the phrase well. Cheese bug's gonna live. The urn healing him up very quickly there, and will end up surviving. IG find quite a few kills. Rabbit now walking back in. Can he salvage this fight for his team is the question. Doesn't look like it. They'll try and jump on him. Anchor Smash will be available. And he'll hit all four. Looking for Luo, dropping him low. That long range earn charge. Almost saving him, but not quite. Oh, man. Yeah, that cheese bug earned already paying for itself. Than I would have thought. That was a three-man Ravage, but they didn't really combine their abilities too well. Sanking used his Burrow Strike as the opener, and I don't think he got a second one off. 
arrow was never used, which was the bigger puzzle for me in that fight, to be honest. Those Hal had plenty of opportunities, I feel like, to just throw out an arrow and lock down a target, unless it wasn't cooldown when he showed up, or at least he had one in the end again that he wasn't using, but... Newbie definitely got the worst end of that fight, and with that fight as well, June suddenly has a blink dagger on Centaur, and that's after being pretty much dominated in the lane. He still has it at 10 minutes after getting two kills right there, so... Yeah, let's not forget, this guy was getting was getting tripled up on CS in the lane, but one good fight and the blink comes out. And it was it was not an overwhelming leap by any means, a 2k gold leap, but with that convincing victory, IG, they storm back into this game, and now they can look for uh, their second tower bottom. They do have a very good pushing lineup. And with no Ravage and no blink on Sand King, I'm, I'm really not seeing Newbie contesting this one, and... Well, the thing is, let's see if Newbie have looked at the changes here. Yeah, they look like it. Okay. Because <laughs> when your tier 1 tower is destroyed, your glyph refreshes. So you should always glyph the tier 1. Right now they have glyph. So. There was no, you just delay the enemy team for those seconds, basically, and now you do it for free. So there's less misuses on the tier 1s, I guess. In the past, teams would sometimes use the glyph and then regret it after, but on tier 1s you can use it with a lot of safety now, so... Well, yeah, it's, you're a, right. it's a why not kind of thing. These towers are going to be falling fast. Uh, Leshrac did only take one point edict though. He's maxing out the lightning and split earth, kind of going for a hybrid build that we see sometimes here. Um, mm -hmm. And Luo will be maxing liquid fire. I think maybe it's just a. It would be overkill perhaps to max both. I don't think it's necessary here uh, to have a high level edict when you have liquid fire. So perhaps it's for the better. They have a lot of control of these. Rabbit's going to be. Rabbit has a mech though. He also has Rabbit, but he gets caught by an ice pad. Mech is there. Ravage may turn this June, dropping low. Can they finish off the kill? They will with the last lightning. Now moves isolated. Caught out by the 430 Ember. Run over by IG as they start diving for kills. Looking for how at the center from Banana. Will it find anyone? It's just out of range. They're kiting and controlling him. While this epicenter fails to connect, 4.30 silence. He gets burrowed onto the enemy tower. He's really diving for these kills, but it's working out beautifully. So far, IG yet to be punished for their extreme aggression. Three heroes dropped for newbie, and that was with the Ravage coming out. And with the mech advantage, which IG only just now picked up, the recipe not yet delivered. Yeah, it's funny to see it once again. I feel like I saw that exact fight just a moment ago. In the <laughs> like, again, a great Ravage coming out from uh, from Ravage. He even got the mech off. He got everything off he needed to in that fight, but the follow-up just wasn't really there. It's a four-man Ravage, but there wasn't a Burrow Strike. Banana wasn't in position until it was too late. There was no mood dealing damage during the Ravage. They didn't have the Sky Rifle come off, I think, even in that fight. and. Once again, the arrow from Hao didn't connect, it flew over the enemy target, so again, another team fight going away of IG, 3-1, to one, and they get the tower, now perhaps there's a turnaround here, Ferrari's taking a lot of damage for Stampede, we'll give him some space here. Uh, actually has a haste at 430, so you can just keep on chasing Sanctuary now, and one more auto attack will bring down the Skyrat. The rest of Newbie trying to run the way out, your Sam King very close to his Blink Dagger, Mako down here, he will do a Lightning Storm. He was a 200 gold away, oh actually no, I guess it's 300 with the new, the new cost of the Blink, but... Now I'll make it 500 away from that blink. IG pushing in the mid lane. Arrow to fly. Cheesebook just kind of watches it harmly, harmlessly pass by him. And IG, keep the pressure up. I mean, I wouldn't call it a death ball strat by any means, Sin, but it's, it is interesting to see this level of pushing aggression working out so well for IG. It was once a 2,000 gold deficit, suddenly a 3,000 gold lead, and with all these towers they're claiming, no surprising, but 430 gets caught up by now, still Stampede will be enough to save him. Moose now the one in trouble, Slight of Fist will come through, Banana needs a good burrow here, and it's a damn good one. Three arrows caught up, Rabbit still chasing IG, don't overextend now, this will be extremely costly if you do. 430 and Chuan on the run, Luo might get blocked in my zone creeps, they decide to pursue the Jakiro, they will get some nice return kills. And IG continue to jump out, and man, look at that jump up just for those two kills. Jeez. That's like a yeah, 1500 so the way, gold swing. The way it works now with the uh, AoE experience and AoE gold for ganks is that it's relative to the difference in net worth and net experience between the two teams. So when one team starts getting a lead, you get way more for winning a fight against them than you did before. and. At the same time, you get less if you're ahead than you used to, right? Or is it only you get more when you're behind? No, I, I believe it's both. So, like, if you're if you're waiting really hard and then you get a kill, that kill is not worth as much as if... Um, or it's worth less than what it normally would be if okay. it was more of an even game. That's my understanding of it. 
And so I, I think you are correct in saying that. Okay. So, yeah, that just these two kills, like you said, really giving a big spike here. And it's just IG overextending there, I guess. There, there was no point in staying there. They, they've used many of their key abilities. They, I think they reset with the Stampede there, actually. As you pointed out earlier, it wasn't a Stampede that made Ferrari go fast. He had a haste rune, but after that Stampede reset, perhaps they should have just got out of there uh, instead of trying to fight that. They have a great reset mechanism in uh, in the Ice Path, and just Ice Path, Stampede, and even Lightning Storm just to slow down the enemies, then you can get out. Um, for those asking, guys, there is no fight recap in the live games. There's, see, there's no, there's no bar here. I can't go back. There's no DVR functionality. That is only in Dota TV. So I believe this tournament is actually free to watch if you... If you want. I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh, but yeah, we, we don't have access to that one. So, Blink it from June. Go, go for a stomp. Whiffing that stomp. This could be costly if Newbie can get the counter initiation, but they don't have a Blink. They can chase with the Templar Assassin Trask, but they're only level 1. So, still the 11 second cooldown. But Lowell gets caught up with an arrow, went straight down the middle lane. A nice exchange for Newbie. And do they go back in here? Chuan is in a position to try and do it, but... They have Ravage, they have Blink Burrow. Oh, he used the Epicenter on Banana. I think he might have misclicked that one a little oh, bit earlier. Oh, jeez. They did not need that to get the kill. Uh, I didn't even see him channel that. cooldown for 30 seconds, so I think he might have used it even before that, anticipating that a team fight was going to break out, but IG just reset and got out, so... But nevertheless, Newbie do get a kill here. Um, start taking a little bit more control of their own jungle. They counter ward it. They now place a defensive ward themselves as well here. And yeah, I mean, so far so good for honestly both teams. It's when you look further into this game, you're expecting the mid game to be kind of explosive from Newbie. They have two great team fight ultimates between Sand King and Tide. They have Templar Assassin, who generally starts really coming online when she gets either the BKB or, if it's a non-BKB game, either a Desolator or Yasha or a combination of those items. And Mirana is also going places, so IG's late game is almost all eggs into one basket Ferrari in this game. It feels like two other cores, Centaur and, and Jakira, will kind of fall off or be not important enough, I think. And Ferrari's farm isn't that good, so... Yeah, look at this. To get some better fights. In comparison, you look at Moo, 88 CS already, and... You know, not only do they have a nice... a couple of nice turn kills mid, but he has really kept the CS up this game, and... It means if they manage to claim these Tier 1 towers, currently IG with a 3 tower advantage, Nubi will be hugely on top. Assuming there's no fights against them during that time, so... He'll go for a BKB here, Sind, and... There's really not much answer to this BKB. There's level 2 Edict, but generally Lashrak standing close to TA with a BKB is a recipe just to get meld and quickly killed off, and uh, Mu will get close to that, but for now it looks like he's actually going to deny the tower mid lane. They don't have a Glyph available in time, and they're afraid IG might just try and force this one. Looking at the IG lineup, one other thing I guess worth mentioning is they're not really the best Roshan lineup. They have Liquid Fire, they have Fenge, which is decent. But hmm. they do have that dire advantage, well, uh, to whatever extent it is now with the new patch. I guess that remains to be seen. Uh, at least it's, see, it is a bit closer to their towers, so I'm wondering if they'll try and force that at some point. Can you check if the glyph is on cooldown for the Radiant for you? It is for me. Yeah, it's on cooldown. Okay, so that's really interesting. So if you deny your tower, you don't get a new glyph. Oh, it's only for the tier 1s, Oh, right? it was a tier 2 he denied. No, yeah, it's a tier 2. Okay. <laughs> I thought he denied a tier 1, I was really confused. Okay, because I, I would think that would be a fun event. Yeah, no, I, think, I think it's just because it was a tier 2. I don't know how it works if, uh... Oh, yeah, I mean, I, if, it was, if it was a tier 1, he could have just clipped when they pushed in. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so Nubi will push in the mid lane in the meantime, and IG can try and slow this one down. And they'll take this tower, mid lane, Glyph, all, was already used, but they'll get a new one. As Hal tries to catch up as well, and this will be a secondary Glyph. They're going to try to push for high ground during this time, Moonlight Shadow from Hal. June is in position to try and stop this tower, it's very close to being killed off, and the question is if he goes for it. But meanwhile, the rest of Nubi have to be back, trying to hunt out IG, and how will go back in for the power, killing it off under cover of Moonlight Shadow. Then they also look to pursue out Chuan, and will they'll catch two. Without the Centaur here, it's a difficult fight for IG. Banana going through with the Burrow trick, but now the turn with the Sleight of Fist. Since Spud suddenly Sunshine finds himself in way too deep. Instant anchor up. Kraken Shell, not enough for it. They'll be fighting the two kills, the double chains, and the lightning splashing through. Do they try and go for high ground here? They're trying for it. 430 is really committing to this. Throws out the spirit the other direction, and still move, smashing him down with those meld crits. Oh, they'll back off for now. He gets earned up, and 
Do they continue this push is the question. There's still an epicenter online. Yeah, they should be aware that Epicenter is still there, so going in now I think is a big mistake. They don't have Stampede to disengage, they don't really have that good push apart from Jakiro, who's currently in the mid lane. So I think going high ground now from, uh, from IG could be really costly, and especially... Well, it is a pretty even game right now in terms of golden experience, so a mistake right now is not as big as if you're ahead in terms of how much you give to the enemy, but... Either way, I think if they push high ground now, they are going to lose this fight to, uh, to Newbie's lineup. Any sort of good arrow setup, uh, especially with Moon out with a BKB on TA who can just kind of run in and ignore everything, this is going to be difficult, but it looks like they're going to try. They're still sitting on that three tower advantage, and despite that, it's pretty much a dead even game going by the numbers at any rate. And if they lose a fight and towers get played, oh, arrow onto Tron. Mystic Flare there to follow it up. Can he swap himself out to save the entire Rabbit caught out, but still stands strong through this fight. Now popping the mech as an epicenter is unloaded on the 430, but he simply sits out. Now that he tried to use Stampede to retreat, Sight of Fist crashing through again, and the slow from the Lash Eye Lightning, the fight from the high ground. IG using the terrain to their advantage here. They'll turn on move, Blinky back in with the stun. Another Sight of Fist, another double searing chain. Starfall dropping everyone so, so low. One more Liquid Fire to Rabbit. Will it be enough? Another Slight 430. He finishes off the Tide Hunter. He gets himself a lot of gold there. Actually, the Jakiro getting the last hit. Oh, IG. They're playing with fire here, but they're just barely coming out on top of these fights. Yeah, and they even forced a buyback out of Rabbit there, and will probably retreat now. Great, great fight from IG. They managed to win that fight basically 4 on 5, right? Because Venge got killed off in the start, and there was a TA with BKB running into them, but they just... They backed off with the Stampede, they bought some time, and eventually, like you said, they used the high ground to their advantage. Ferrari got so much work done, considering how heavily pressured he was in the beginning of the fight, just using range to his advantage. And if they get Roche 2 now, they're looking really, really good. There's a Battle Fury as well. This is exactly what IG needed. Ferrari wasn't doing too well in the farm department. He now has 4 CS per minute. He's gonna get the Aegis. He got a couple of kills and a lot of assists in the last few fights. And I want to point out that Lestrac is 8, 1, and 8 and has 3.6k gold. And he can transition into pretty much a core at this point with this much gold in 22 minutes. I'm curious to see what he goes for. Maybe BKB is, is a good choice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, sometimes we see even, like, the, the Bloodstone, but do, do you think he just needs the magic community this game? There's, um, there's also Aghanim Scepter, which we were discussing earlier. Ags is really good, but he hasn't skilled his ultimate. So oh, kind of yeah. <laughs> underwhelming. Uh, he'll go for a BKB. Well, it keeps his options open for now, but probably going BKB with the Sogar Club. It counters pretty much the entirety of Newbie, with the exception of TA, but TA right now doesn't have any damage items. Uh, Mu will not be able to kill off the Lishrak in within a reasonable time frame. He has 1100 health and 6 armor on the Lesh, so I think Mu will need the Meld Strike and an additional 3 or 4 hits, not even uh, counting the Magic 1 that the Lishrak has too. And Nirana, the same story, has a BKB, no damage items. It's, I think it's the best choice here for, uh, for Chizbug, and I would be surprised if he goes for something else. Yeah, and with the Ember Spirit also taking up a Battle Fury, it's it's not like these BKBs make you immune to damage by any means, so... I am I am going to be curious to see how much 430 can accomplish in the upcoming fights. For now, Newbie, they'll back off. And the big worry for them, Sin, is just map control. It's really putting a tax on these supports, being forced to buy so many Sentry Wards, to d ward to try to remove IG's vision on the map, and... Oh, it's IG making the aggressive plays. They're heading towards the Radiant Bottom lane bracket sitting here. Maybe if you're looking for a fight, though, yeah, he, he will take out. Oh, it was close. He could have been yield there by Luo. They stuck around a long time, to be honest, but well, they'll back up in the end. But yeah, if you look, have a look at Rabbit, we saw how very quickly he got that mech. It was like 10 minutes. He has not made any item progression for like 15 minutes. We were expecting a blink to come way before 20, and he's not even close to it now at 24 after that buyback, after a couple of bad fights. And I think it's the one tool Newbie really need that they don't have. They need the Tide to be able to blink Ravage so they can set up with an Epicenter. Because, to be honest, we haven't had a single good Epicenter in this game. And it's not because there hasn't been fights, and it's not because he hasn't had the blink, they just... They just didn't get the fights. They're letting Banana initiate with a Burrow Strike or follow up on the arrow. And I think that's a mistake. They have to... They have to have that as the secondary team fight utility ability here. Man, Lilo just walks right up to the front door, he knocks on it, he opens it. He peeks inside and nobody's there to greet him. Gets off a liquid fire, backs off, to clear out the wave and 
At some point, you just gotta stop this. So you're gonna lose your two or three tower uncontested. Again, the sleight of fist coming through, just harassing Rabbit back a bit. Well, newbie, wait. It, it's like they all want to jump in, but Moo will hide on the high ground. There's a century more just to read. Oh, oh there's, a, he's visible. <laughs> there's a sentry, and now they go in with the two hero stop coming out from Dude. It's a good way to start this fight. The BKB used by Chainsmoke, he's gonna try to fight through this, but there's a little bit too much physical damage forcing him off the engagement. While 430 dives incredibly deep, he does have Aegis, two hero chance, he'll lose the Aegis though. He might be in too far. Let's see if he can get out on the second life. A sentry war drop once again. 430 couldn't get off the chains there. He was silenced during the rest of the slate of fist ended. And IG will still push on for their first slate of racks. Only 26 minutes in. Getting aggressive. Arrow clipping Chuan. Probably going down here to the melt to gosh follow up. A little bit too much damage. You can't live through it. Well, Rapid begins the chase. Trap getting thrown out. Mystic player there as well. Jakir will use himself up in the air, but it almost allows Newbie to reset. Well, maybe they've gone too far in their efforts to get that reset. Four of the turns and again with the sleight of fist. The double searing chains. Rabbit bought out. Epicenter's there, and it will lock down 430, finishing him off. And that ends a pretty decent streak, a dominating streak for him. Chase Oh, what a great oh, TP. That was good of you. Still, with the tower falling, IG maintain a bit of a lead here. But Newbie gets some new items. They pick up the, the Yasha. They now 1,700 gold on Rapid. And at the same time, you look at 430 nearly completing the Daedalus. So he is getting pretty scary on that Ember Spirit. And they really dove for that really one. expensive so. for Newbie. They used two buybacks. I'm not sure if you saw that. But both Mirana and the Templar Assassin buying back there. So not only do they lose gold on that, of course, but they also, they're clearing out this top lane. They're not getting gold for it. Because the buyback timers now are getting to that point where the... The gold penalty actually lasts for a very long, long duration here, and they didn't... I feel like these two buybacks were... I, I don't want to call them wasted, but essentially, perhaps it would have been better to just buy back one of them, and... I think Moo could have got the job done alone. I don't feel like Hao did too much with his buyback. And they need to be really careful not to make these mistakes, because when you've bought back two heroes like this, if the next fight goes wrong, the game is over. You have two cores who can't buy back, then you're gonna lose two lanes of Rex. Uh, to a level 4 Edict and the Liquid Fire at this point in the base. They even used the Glyph, I believe, beforehand. So, yeah, just three minutes on that. This Siege could end the game if Newbie make any sort of misstep. Yeah, and regarding the Marana, she's buying back with a BKB, which was on cooldown. Had just used the 10 second duration. So, at that point, you you pretty much offer nothing to your team aside from an Arrow and, and Star Storm, which I think, like you said, didn't accomplish a ton. So, they'll keep on pushing it. IG, looking to find that second round of kills. Dale is not picked up just yet. The North Void Sanctioning. They'll find a Chain's Initiation. The follow-up stuns are there on Moot, but they don't really want to commit onto him. They'll back off as the trap slows down the retreat of Cheesebug. IG still content to slow seize this one. I'm not trying to force it too far. Moonlight Shadow will be wearing off. They do have a Blink Tiger on Tidehunter now. He just yeah, managed he to pick this to up. get a good Blink Ravage now. And there's only the one BKB on Cheesebug, so this could potentially be big. Let's see if Tron gets caught, or maybe with the level 2 swaps can even keep a teammate alive. Arrow, fishing. Uh, it's a pretty far ways out, even if it does hit. They're not gonna go. Patient hold from Newbie. And IG just are not giving up. They are just brute forcing this middle lane, man. Or, sorry, this bottom lane. I think the big play here, if it works like we expect, is to earn the Tide and then swap someone else into the fight and just kill them off. Because Tide can't blink when he's going strike in, arrow to oh. follow this up. Now the Ravage comes through, they didn't stop Rabbit's initiation. He caught everyone. Now Cheesebug will BKB, but Jakiro's out of the picture. That means no mechanism, no Yule Scepter for this fight. 430, trying to retreat. Chases onto him, they catch him with an Epi. The first strike falls up. The defensive swap simply inadequate. Way too far in. So he'll buy back on the Ember and he'll try to win this fight in round number two. Dropping the remnant to retreat to a DB. 430 will soon be on his own in this engagement. It's only Cheesebug left here, but they've brought down three. The Marana with no buyback down for 55 seconds. Rabbit trying to hold his own with another Banker Smash coming through. Moo drops low. 430. The Flame Guard picked up. It's an ultra kill for Moo, but 430 gets the triple. Nine heroes dead! Nine <laughs> heroes dead in this fight! Oh my goodness. It's gotta feel so good being the last person inside the base and just knowing, well... Last man standing, man. The two last man standing. anything about me are dead, so I'll just... I think I'll just take the Rax myself. I'll when is the last coming? You can probably kill him as well. When is the last time you've seen an Ember Spirit... Oh, my... <laughs> okay. 
430, gotta be careful here, man. This will be a dieback if he ends up going down. We'll try to zip away, but Sanchez continues pursuit. 430, and all kinds of trouble. We'll go for the TPF, but yeah, he'll be okay. Can't get a range for another nuke. But actually didn't get to uh, throw another flame bar, or, sorry, the fire remnant. So he can't come back in the bottom lane, and this he didn't will be the defense the of the melee barracks, I think. Unless this hero catapult can stop it. He left. It needs like two more shots. Ah, three more needed. Yeah, 430 was the last man standing there. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, Moo got an ultra kill, and he's now got 3,300 gold. Burn Strike comes through a little. Stun onto Banana, they try to finish this one up. The melee has a glyph, even. This is a nice bait from Newbie, as Shakira will use himself in the air. He needs another liquid fire going onto this, but it's still invulnerable. Now the instant take down, but that melee finally dropped already. Well, IG claim it. Rabbit trying to hold his own. And now the BKB from Hal, pursuing out Lil through the tree line, snipes it with an arrow. For 30, back into the fight, he's hooked it back. Blink forward, the stop was on to Hal, thinking the BKB would end. But in fact it did, they still end up getting the kill there. Magic Missile on the move, follow up damage from the Lash, and they'll overrun Newbie, driving them back to the well in fact. IG. They never really had a huge lead, Sims. I mean, you look at just net worth this game, it was never remotely big, but... They just kept on pushing, kept on sieging, and at long last, they've cracked one lane racks, so they're looking for a second. Yeah, they just executed better, I feel. They they took these kind of fights where they Radiant's extended the fights long enough for Jakira to get multiple ice packs off, get multiple slides of fist off, and, oh, okay, so I'm showing you really did. Oh, and Rabbit even gets ice path too, but... Rabbit just there, epicenter follow comes through, on to three, for 430 now, Rex, he wasn't caught by any of these nukes, and he can look to turn this one chasing onto Rabbit. Finish him off. That's 780 crit. Four dead. It's about to be a fresh wipe. The Centaur gloriously stomps and celebrates their victory. IG, one win away from knocking out your defending TI4 champions from from I League. They've got to win two in a row now to bounce back. Yeah, that was. If there's one thing I can uh, I can put a finger on from uh, from newbie, it's I feel like their biggest mistake in this game was just that they didn't seem to be exactly on the same page with when they wanted to fight and how they wanted to fight.